What's up guys? So today we're going to go over five tips for anybody who wants to be in the lifting and fitness game for life. I've had a recent influx of questions from existing clients and new clients, people who want to become clients, asking me about how to be in this for the long term. A lot of the people who reach out initially are people who are just getting started or they've been lifting for just a few years and their goals seem so far away. They either want quick fixes or they want to know how they can be doing this for so long. And that is one of the main reasons I have this channel. It's so I can direct people to a podcast or a video I've made and say, check this out. This should be able to answer your questions. So we're going to get into those now. And the first one is find what motivates you. And, and I don't like to use the term motivation or act like it's the most important thing because a lot of times it becomes habit and discipline, not just motivation, which can fluctuate. However, I do think it is important to have something that motivates you, that you're good at, that can create that positive reinforcement, okay? Not everybody is going to have the biggest muscles or the most strength, but most people can find something physically that they are good at. And that might mean that you're not necessarily going after bodybuilding goals. It might be a powerlifting goal. It might be something with CrossFit. Most people have something that they can excel at physically, and that is going to result in positive reinforcement, that dopamine hit, and keeping you going. The reality is a lot of these people who are these superstar athletes or the top of the top in bodybuilding, they talk about their motivation, but it's very easy to be motivated when you are grinding and seeing the results that you expect to be seen. It's another thing entirely when you're grinding and grinding and you're not seeing the results and you're grinding more and you're not seeing the results. This is assuming, of course, that you've ruled out other factors, like you're not saying that you're working really hard, but you're sleeping four hours a night or you're not eating. I'm talking about you're doing things right and maybe the results aren't what you expected, but there should be other things physically that can still motivate you. Whether you have that intrinsic motivation to just get stronger, whatever it is that drives you, I do think it's important to find something physically that motivates you and that keeps you going for that dopamine hit because that is an important thing inherent to human psychology to continue moving forward towards a goal. On that note is a huge emphasis on progressive overload because that directly ties in with that psychological principle. I see so many people in the gym, so many, I mean, it almost seems surprising to me still because I think in this industry, we understand the importance of progressive overload, but a lot of people in just a regular gym, sometimes you'll see these soccer moms and they'll just say, well, I just had the best workout. And I say, well, what do you mean the best workout? Oh, well, I, I did this new exercise and that really burned. I did this exercise and that really burned. To me, that has nothing to do with what a good workout is. I could feel like garbage, but if I hit a five pound PR, that's a good workout, okay? Something that you can actually measure and is driving you forward. It doesn't necessarily have to be more weight on the bar. It could be more volume, more reps, which would obviously be more volume. It could be something else that's even less tangible, but there should be something that you are moving towards that you can measure, not just this felt good, or I got a sick pump. I don't think that long-term that is going to reinforce the habits. I think it's really important to be able to focus on something that motivates you. Whether or not you want to be the biggest person or the strongest, that progressive overload is not only incredibly important for long-term physical progress, but for long-term psychological maintenance towards your goals, very, very important. If you're asking me what would be the best from a bodybuilding standpoint, I do think sufficient volume and progression of weight in the moderate rep ranges with key exercises is what's most important. But again, depending on your goal, it might be different. Tip number three is to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. The reality is, as much as I'm talking here about motivation and having something that moves you forward, at the end of the day, discipline is really important and it's not that you're gonna feel motivated all the time. It has to become a habit and there has to be a time where you might not want to do something and you're going to push anyway. Very few people achieve great success by feeling comfortable all the time. I know it's almost like a trite saying at this time, you have to be uncomfortable, but that is a reality. Most people who are really successful in business at least had periods of time where it was very uncomfortable. They had to have time away from their family. They had to be grinding 100 hours per week. They were uncomfortable. When it comes to the gym, most workouts can be very physically uncomfortable. You know, you've probably heard variations of the quote, if you do what everybody else does, you'll get what everybody else gets. And most of us who have these ambitious goals do not want to be like the average gym person or the average person in life. So you have to get uncomfortable. Ideally, you eventually reap those rewards and you'd think that you could just become comfortable later in life. Although I can tell you that most people who have the mindset to get there continue to push themselves and stay uncomfortable for a lot of their life. And you, know, you can get into a whole topic and discussion there as to you know if that leads to the best life. But most people who are very successful are constantly pushing themselves into uncomfortable zones. Tip number four is to try different things. And there's two reasons for that. One, 
is due to boredom, right? Many people do get bored. I know that it is, again, something that people brag about in the fitness industry, that they have been doing the same thing year in and year out. I'm one of those people, even though I've tried different routines, but the reality is many people do get bored. Not everybody wants to just focus on building as much muscle as possible for 20 years or 30 years. If you're gonna make this this lifetime pursuit, many times people will switch focus. Maybe you are gonna have a phase of your life where you get a little bit more into cardio pursuits. Maybe there's gonna be another time in your life where you're super focused on powerlifting. Maybe you get into CrossFit. Maybe it's not even necessarily weight training. Maybe you get into another sport and then you eventually hopefully do come back to lifting. I think everybody should have some level of lifting in their life, but the reality is if you wanna be active and fit for 50 years, it's okay to kind of pivot at times and maybe you make your way back. But I think it is very important to try different things due to the boredom. And secondly, in order to find what works for you, even if we keep it within, let's say specifically bodybuilding, the reality is that you need to experiment just because some study came out that said this number of sets and this number of reps or this frequency and intensity was ideal doesn't mean that that's gonna be the best for you. If you actually look deep into the studies, you'll see that different individuals responded differently. And so it is important for a given individual to try higher and lower volumes, frequencies, intensities, different diets, because you may find that things work differently for you. And it may even be dependent on the period of life that you're in. It might be that when you're younger, you're gonna have more of a response to higher volume and eventually you kind of have to taper that down. Or maybe you were super stressed when you were younger and it's actually when you're older that you have a better response. So I do think it's important to try different things and to experiment. The reality is as long as you're focusing on the key tenants, you're probably gonna be able to make some progress and you can find how to optimize that at least relative to you depending on what levers you pull. And the fifth and final tip is gonna be something that is of course important for consistency, but also for progress, which is that while I do recommend experimenting and trying things, I also recommend not trying too many things too often. Because if you are one of those people that program hops week after week, month after month, you may very well find that you are just getting these neural adaptations to whatever new thing you're doing. And from a health standpoint, that might be fine. You might still get the psychological benefits of exercising. You might still get the improved mood. You might still get health benefits for your heart and other aspects. However, or if we're talking about muscle growth or strength building, reality is you have to have some consistency or you're never really going to optimize long-term progress which ties back into the first point of being motivated long term and the psychological reasons for that right moving forward towards a goal so while it is important to experiment it's also important not to constantly change what you're doing because you're not necessarily going to progress and you're not necessarily going to find actually what is working for you you can't do most routines for two weeks and then actually have an understanding of whether or not that worked for you. Many times you have to do a routine for six plus months, depending on how advanced you are, to really get an understanding on if it works better for you than another routine. This is a very long-term game, especially once you've been lifting for five plus years, the progress is much slower. And so you need to be consistent long-term. Once you've found a few things that work for you, change one variable at a time so you can actually see how things affect it. If you just completely program hop or change every variable, you're not going to know. And you might be 10 years into the game, constantly switching things. Great that you could make it that far and be doing this for 10 years, but you might still not be optimizing things to find what can work best for you because you haven't actually taken the time to approach it rationally and try one thing at a time for a reasonable period of time. All right, guys, so those were five tips for anybody who wants to be in this game for a very long time, especially those who are newer to the game, who are wondering how to be at this for the rest of their life. So I hope this helped you guys. If you liked the video, like the video, subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.